Hello everybody, it's Heath Robinson with Topaz here again, and I'm excited to be hosting another awesome webinar, uh, this time with Joe Reardon, who's going to be presenting post processing for impact using Topaz tools. All right, it's moved out of the way enough. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're going to try a little bit of uh, uh, the, one of the new features in Topaz uh, Studio, which allows us to go back and forth between the plugins and the studio, and it keeps you away from that... Uh, people out in the Adobe world, and we can do all of our processing right here in uh, Topaz. So we're gonna begin with this uh, little image that uh, I've got uh, working on a personal project of uh, industrial uh, photography. And we're going to work on this particular uh, image, it's a drill. So we'll first we'll jump out and we'll go into Topaz Adjust on this particular image. I apologize, these are big files. Uh, unfortunately, they're my uh, raw files from my big Nikon uh, camera. And so we're just gonna jump into using the preset on this particular one, just to pop it open a little bit. I'm going to make some small adjustments to my personal taste, how I like things. I like to bring the contest down because I'm going to bring it up a little bit more in the studio. The color, I think I want to make this adjust a little bit less. Again, always these are seasoned to your particular taste and what your end result is going to be. And I'm happy with this. So we will just press OK. And into back in the studio. So what happens when it comes back in the studio, it's going to create a new file and it, my software set up so it'll, it'll jump right to that next file that it's uh, created from studio or from uh, the plugins. It'll circle it in blue and you'll see it come over here any second. There it goes. And it, right there, it circled in blue. And so now I know which one I'm working on. Um, so we're going to commit to make some small adjustments here. We're going to go first. We're going to go into precision contrast. So uh, this particular image, I really like what it does for this. And we'll make some micro adjustment changes here. I really want this to, to pop the blackness of this uh, drill. So we will make some small, small adjustments in micro contrast. And I'm going to make a little bit of adjustment here also in um, the mid-tones to bring the uh, image up just a bit more, get some definition in here. We'll press OK. Another adjustment. We will go into precision detail, which is um, going to bring out the finer points of this particular image. And I like, my favorite is uh, Subtle Sharp. Everybody has their own particular favorites. Uh, my type of uh, photography, I'm really fond of Subtle Sharp to give me what I want. And I'm also, next step for me would be a tone curve in a very slight, slight, slight S curve to give it just a bit of contrast and I'm going to darken this up just by bringing the toe section down a little bit and it's going to highlight right here as the more I go down it'll give me some nice nice contrast in there and then from here since I've gone into adjust it initially I like to go into adjust because it gives me a um, perfect setup for uh, black and white it already uh, a little bit overboard with the colors within adjust. And then if you bring it into black and white effects or black and white, adjustments are very, very little to do. As you can see, I've almost got a graphite in graphic uh, etch look on this because of the adjustments we made initially in adjust. So at this point, you're going to adjust the taste. So we, I know from the original image, we had a little bit of uh, coloring in the background, and I want that to fade out just a little bit. So we're going to make that darker, but not too, too dark. As I remember the colors we had. You can see a little bit of change here. 
just by making some small, small adjustments in there. Uh, I'm happy with this. I really like this etch look of uh, in the black and white I'm able to achieve with this uh, software. Next step, we'll take this into edges because I do want the edge to be very, very well defined. It's one of my favorite uh, little tricks within Topaz to define the edges. It gives a little bit more of a rough or defined look here. As you can see, this is where we started. Uh, you can see them side by side here. And I'm very happy. And at this point, I'm going to just put this back to one up. And then the last adjustment I'm going to make to this, just so that you see this particular image and that you're drawn right to it, is a vignette. The changes you need to make here are very quick in order to go from bland, if you will, to something that's uh, suitable to hang in a gallery on a wall. And as you can see from the original to where we are now, very quick, very easy, and dramatic effect very, very quickly. So I'm not going to save this. And we're going to move on to our next image, which is a blended image. Now, I had to do a little bit of work in Photoshop with this first because it is a it was a 15 image um, blend uh, for focus stacking. So it didn't come in as a raw file, but I have made no adjustments to this other than to align and blend them. Um, I don't know if anybody out there is using the uh, blend mode or uh, auto blend mode for focus stacking within the uh, uh, Adobe world, but it really, uh, you get from the beginning all the way out to where you want it to stop as far as uh, being in crystal clear focus. We've got a couple of images like this if we can get to all of them. And again, we're going to go into plugins from here and we're going to bypass doing some initial adjustments in uh, studio and go right into plugins. And this is the thrust of what I wanted to show today that you can jump back and forth and you don't have to go through the Adobe world. It's just everything is one stop shopping right from uh, here. And so this one, we're going to use the um, photo pop preset, which gives me everything I want. I'm going to turn down the color just a little bit. Get the adaptive exposure just a little bit, the adaptive saturation, sorry, in the regions just a little bit less. And I'm happy with the um, adaptive exposure and the amount of uh, regions that I've got here, maybe just a little bit more in the regions. There we go. And then we're going to press OK, and then it'll go back to Studio. I know, why, I know why I can't see that. This is in the way. There we go. So I've been working on a personal project of some industrial photography, um, shooting indoors and grainy, gritty things. And uh, this just struck my eye uh, at an old uh, mill, I particularly like this image. And we're going to make some, a heck of a lot more adjustments once we get this into um, studio. So here we are. You can see that it's going to move to the end. And it, it is now highlighted in blue. Um, Hey, Joe. So that, yes. Uh, people are asking if you could zoom in just a little bit. It's looking kind of small on some of our screens. Zoom in. Yep, just right there. Right there? Yeah, that should work. All right, can, I, can you make it full screen? How's that working? Yeah, that's a lot better. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. No worries. So I can make all my adjustments from here. So very first thing I want to do is make some defined edges on this particular um, product. So we're going to go into the edge and increase this so it really does jump out at you. And I'm going to make some adjustments on, get rid of the suppress the weak edges, and maybe make this just a little bit on the thicker side so it's well-defined. And as you can see, we're we're black, completely black in the, the background here as well. Um, next step for me on this particular image is into precision detail. 
and we're going to go into uh, what I like is my my favorite uh, the type of imaging I'm shooting. I, I tend to use the subtle sharp one and it just gives a, a look of sharpness without going overboard. And you can make all the adjustments that you want, whether it's highlights or shadows. This particular um, preset works very well with this particular image for me. Uh, next step, we're going to go into precision contrast. I want to make this pop just a bit more. And some micro adjustment, which is one of my favorites, replaces the, the clarity, and which is going to make some minor adjustments, not too heavy. And we're going to make the midtones just a little bit brighter. So you'll see that show up in the left side of the image a lot. I want to keep this all black in the background here. So we have this. And I'm going to go into um, an S curve. I assume everybody knows what tone curves and S curves, S curves are and what they'll do for your image. Uh, we can make an extreme example and you can see what it does, but not what we want. We're going to just put a little bit of brightness at on the left side of this image. Then I'm going to drag the toe down. just a small bit of S curve and gives you a nice little contrast pop. So I've noticed in this particular image, uh, we've got a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna go into HSL and tone that out a little bit so it looks more black than it does blue. You can see if you hover over each of these little squares, the color squares, you can see that the colors uh, on the screen will actually have a crosshatch of what is the uh, um, overall color of that particular section of the image. So I'll click on the uh, blue saturation, uh, turn it down just a bit so it turns more towards the black, oh, it gets rid of the blue, and then I'm going to turn that lightness up so I can see some of the shadows in there. Not too, too much. Everything always is season, season to taste. I'm very happy with this. So what would I want to do to draw your attention so it just looks at this? And that would be one of my favorite tools that uh, is in Topaz is a vignette. And as you can see, you can make some adjustments on the strength of how much you want. And I just wanted it to be almost a silhouette type of image where the background was completely blacked out and it's drawing your eye right into the object uh, that I tried to photograph here. So I'm happy with this. We can turn down the, um, the size of this just a little bit. Draw you in just a little bit more. This is this is the the focus of the particular object of uh, this image. You can nice triangle here, and I'd be okay with this one. So we pop open to go to the next one. One of my favorites. This one came in as a raw image, so there we go. So it needs a little bit of work. So the very first thing we're going to do is crop this out. Let's hope we can crop this out nice and straight. So I want to get rid of that curve. And I'm going to adjust this on the corner so it will be level. That looks about level there. Sometimes hard to tell, but that looks level. And it takes a minute for it to catch up, but it should straighten out and crop to what I want. And again, since you've made an adjustment on this, it will go to the very last photo or last section here, and it'll be highlighted in blue. So I'll know which one I'm working on next, which is right here. Now we're going to make some adjustments, and we're going to. I have a preset all made, and I'll go through the preset I made for this particular one. So I'm moving into my effects. And there's one I call Blue Truck. I'll go over and explain exactly what I did. As you can see, the difference between 
where I started and what I've got now. This is staying all within um, studio without going out at all. So it's not necessary, but for those that don't have all of the um, pro adjustments and you have a whole lot of the plugins, you can jump back and forth now. So what I'll show you what we've done here. I've changed the exposure up a little bit to about 38. I've boosted the clarity a little bit. I've taken the shadow down a little bit because I wanted uh, this highlight on the screen to uh, uh, be a little bit less and the shadow here is uh, negative. The highlight is also negative. You can see back and forth where we were to where we are. Now I'm actually seeing some of the window and all of the dirt that was uh, on that window. It's an old beat up uh, somewhere in the 1930s uh, truck I found up in Vermont. So we dropped the highlights down. I'm gonna leave the saturation alone. And the next step I used in this particular image was the precision contrast. It was one of my favorite, favorite tools that Topaz has come up with. And we can do this and make some micro changes in the amount of contrast. Instead of working with curves constantly, um, we're able to bring out the, uh, the contrast in, on a micro level here. So I've settled on a micro contrast of 29. And then the, the smaller ones, the low contrast areas, I've, I've jacked it up to 18. In the medium, I've gone down a little bit. Let me show you, because I'm at negative 17 now, what happens if you go the opposite direction? You can see very quickly, very subtle changes. And this is always, always, always going to be uh, seasoned to taste. And again, with the high, I've dropped it down. And I'll show you where if we go to the extremes. And this is how you should always test your your process out to get the image the way you want it to look is just make these sliders go left and right until you're very happy with what you've uh, got in front of you. Uh, we've increased some of the shadows here quite a bit because if I go backwards to um, zero, you can see that it really is a little bit too dark inside. So I've increased that just a bit. Right there, in the midtones, I brought up a little bit. I'll go negative on this so you can see the effect of what happens when you go one direction versus the other. And you, as you can see, you can make some very dramatic changes into the image just with your uh, sliders. And the highlights, um, I had some spectral highlights in here. I wanted to tone down just a bit. I'll go a little bit to the right positive. I was negative 13. And you can see the difference if I just drag this all the way to the right versus dragging it all the way to the left. And the very subtle differences that you can see with this particular photo. We were about negative 13 here. So the next step with this particular image is out to a plugin. Now I know that this is uh, inside of uh, Topaz uh, Studio, but it's also for so those folks that don't have um, that particular pro upgrade, you can still get the same effect by jumping out to the plugin. So we're gonna go to simplify. It's one of my favorite features within this, uh, the Simplify, or I can uh, increase the details and some of the edges at the same time. So we're gonna go to Edge and Detail Boost, and I'm going to make some changes in the edges. And in this version here, you can actually see the edges show up. Highlight them, take this down a little bit, and reduce the small. So I want your attention to be drawn towards the outline of the window, the back window of the uh, truck. And you can see some of these rust spots that are showing up and, and not over the top, just enough to give a hint of uh, what they were. And press the combine, press okay. And you, once it comes back in, you'll see the final look of what this uh, image started with and what it ended up with, right? Now in this one, I could have gone and stayed within studio, but a lot of folks just don't have that particular upgrade or that pro pack. Um, 
uh, available to them. So that's why I jumped out and went to uh, the plug-in version, which is you know tried and true. We've had the, the simplified version out there for quite a long time. And this is the, the final look of it. This actually just came off a gallery wall uh, last week. So I'm very fond of this particular image, an old uh, beat up uh, truck I found up, uh, up by Ben and Jerry's in uh, Vermont. So I'm happy with this one. Now I'm gonna try something um, similar to what I did on the last webinar, which was blending some images, but I'm gonna do it in a different manner this time. Last time I did this was for blending um, both extending your dynamic range. And we're gonna use the same technique, but we're going to use this for something very, very artistic and very different. So I've got a two image blend here. And but first we're gonna to go to a plugin and this may be something you haven't seen or, or thought of before. And we're gonna use lens effects. So I'm waiting for the day when this comes available in studio. But for now, we're jumping out and we're going into lens effects into the plugin. Now this was shot up in uh, Oregon in the uh, deep woods and you can see that uh, it, this is either fog that day or the big fires from last year. Um, either way, it was a, a nice image and we're gonna make some adjustments here to the amount of fog. I'm gonna drop this down just a bit. I don't want it overdone. I want the region size. So it covers pretty much all of this image. And this is where you can get a little artistic creative license in this. In the transition, uh, increase that up a little bit. And I'm gonna leave the diffusion alone. I'm, I'm happy with this. So it's given a very soft image. And this is just another way to um, make a, a blend do things for you that you just may not have thought of before. So I'm gonna press the image, I'm gonna drag over here and get the, oh, sorry, did not wanna do that. I wanted to make one adjustment here, which was, Bear with me, this is a big, here we go, motion blur. And as you can see in motion blur, we can make an adjustment to, instead of camera movement with your um, uh, camera, either handheld or with your tripod, you can make a, uh, an effect of sweeping the camera up and down. So I'm very happy with this. And now we're going to put the other image in on top of it the blend part, which was the image right next to it. Drag and drop. Now from this first image that I did, I'm gonna make this put go into the background so it shows just the original image on top. And I'm going to use my luminosity, I'm gonna grab here, and I'm gonna change some of the mass transparency. So you're gonna get a blend of both. Um, of these images together, the transparency somewhere around here, and then the luminosity somewhere around here, and then the range I'm gonna drop down. So if you remember what this looked like starting out, I added the original or an original image that wasn't uh, didn't have motion into it because I wanted you to have a good feel for um, a foggy day and I'm gonna add just one last little adjustment for motion, but I'm gonna go in the opposite direction this time and very, very, very subtle. I want you to see that you can get very creative with lens effects and some of the um, adjustments you can make in here. I'm gonna drop the opacity down just a bit. So it gives you a hint of camera movement and fog at the same time. So I'm very happy with this. This is actually gonna go into a gallery um, very close to me um, next week. That is really cool. I've never seen that application of motion blurs before. Uh, yeah, I um, I just worked at it and worked at it worked at it. You know, I mean, we all know how hard it is to get one good shot when you're doing this with a camera and you're doing it at an eighth of a second and trying to get a straight line and it's even, you know, more difficult to do it with the tripod. You don't want to jerk it up and down, 
this just makes life so much easier. You envision what the end, end shot is going to look like and you just add, add all of the ingredients into it and uh, two shots and I'm done. So it's a, a little bit creative license here. Um, and actually you can do it with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten different images, but I picked two for this particular one. So I'm happy with this particular one. Do you um, mind showing your before and after? If you can click on, uh, you can click on the image and it should show up. Yeah. Yep. Here's the here's the original that I started with. Here's the original, and here's the the second image that I worked with to blend in. And you can see from the the uh, the one I just did that was um, here, the final one. That's where we are now. And if I go back to the original, it's, it's the one that came out of uh, Lens Effects. So this is how it came out of Lens Effects, and then then blending all of these images together and putting some motion into them. We have something that's very different. Yeah, that's fantastic. More, more artistic than um, a straight photograph. Um, so just, just to show you, you can do things. And that's why I said this is a, a, a webinar of uh, processing for effect or impact and intent and if you envision what the photograph is going to look like at the end and if you know the tools within the topaz world you can achieve anything and this is a good example of achieving anything that uh, was not there at the beginning all right so we're going to work on uh, another one i shot from the um, pacific northwest last year on my little workshop let me find it here this is in uh, Rialto Beach up in um, Washington State. So we're going to go and use um, lens effects first. And here we go. We're going to darken this up just a little. And then I'm going to go into clarity to show those that don't have um, everything uh, in studio. You can jump back and forth within the uh, plug-in world. So I like these clouds a lot. And we're going to make them just a bit darker. I'm touching nothing else other than, let's see, maybe even a full um, stop right here. I like that. So press OK. It's going to come back into studio, and then I'm going to jump back out and go into clarity. Let me sure I got the right one that's selected. And there it automatically goes to the end. I really like that. I don't have to guess which one did I work on. It jumps right over to that one. Thank you, Heath, for showing me that. So I'm going to go into clarity, and one of my favorites is um, using the clouds. It's, um, I'm very fond of shooting clouds, give you a, a dramatic look, and I jump this up just a little, just a little, so you can see the effect here. Back into studio. Uh, and this is Rialto Beach, if anybody uh, knows the area up there in the Pacific Northwest, uh, up right next to the Olympic uh, National Forest. And the place is just chock full of these old trees that fall down and wash up on the shore. Makes for nice foreground objects. This one, this one is going to be a little bit of work, um, but we'll get the end result where we want. So now we're back in the studio. And... There's the effect. So I've got a little bit of a, a blue haze here. So I want to get rid of that. A little too much blue for my taste. As you can see, if I hover over the blue, it pretty much saturated everything with the, the cross hatch. You can see everything's pretty covered in blue. So I'm going to drop that down just a, just a hair, just to get rid of it, suit the taste. And I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. And we're also going to do a little bit of the aqua because there's a little bit of both blue and aqua in here. Right, there it is. 
turn it down just a little bit take some of that saturation out and again bring it up in brightness just hair it's always suit the taste the season to taste and I'm happy with this and then I'm going to go to this is going to be a black and white First, we're going to go to dehaze because you can see some of the haze that's on these trees up here. We're going to um, dehaze it and then we're going to go into black and white. And there is a lot in this uh, menu. <laughs> Sometimes I get lost. There it is. So we will just take a little bit out, suppress some of the artifacts, and let's go a little strong and see what happens. Oh, a little too hard, a little too harsh in my taste. There we go. Something I like right about there. And it infected everything in the background and kind of left this uh, foreground object alone. And since we went and made some adjustments with color, when we go to black and white, it jumps out. But I know that we had blue in here, so I'm going to make this a little darker for a little bit more dramatic. Also, purple and aqua. And that tree, as I recall, had a bit of yellow in here. If I go far to the right, you can see it pop left. If I go to the left, it makes it a little bit darker. And that's where I wanted it, a little darker. So not too, too much uh, in the way of changes. Last, not last, but next, we're going to go into precision contrast. Even though we went into clarity, going back in does not hurt you. And now I've got some drama in those clouds, which, which is where I wanted it. I'm going to make some minor, minor adjustments here. Bring some of that white back into the water, the edge, not too much, just to taste. Now we'll go into one of my favorite. Um, I hope everybody uses uh, S-curves because they really do make a big difference in what you can and you can't do with your images along the way. Makes a dramatic impact. Uh, too much and always just season to taste. So a little bit darker right here. I'm good. And now last piece, because I want you to be focused right here and not off to the edges. I don't want you jumping out because the way this, this tree is just shooting out this direction, I want you to stay inclusive of here. So we're going to put a vignette to keep you inside the picture. I don't want you jumping out. And we'll just make that a little bit less strong. And a little bit different on the size. A little wider, make it smaller. Right about there. And I'm a happy camper with that one. So again, uh, processing for impact. So we went from here to here. And if I show you the original one, we went really from here to here. Quite a bit of difference. And all within the, the Topaz Studio world, uh, we jumped out a little bit for the plugins for those folks that do not have um, all of the uh, Studio Pro features. How are we doing for time there, Heath? We got time for a couple more, I think. I hope yes, I'm not sir. going too. I hope I'm not going too fast, but um, I'm trying to cover a lot here. Um, this is one of my favorite places. I'm actually going back here for um, a vacation in uh, just a few weeks or a few months. This is at Muckross Abbey in uh, Killarney National Park in uh, Killarney, Ireland. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place to go visit. So we're going to go into adjust here because I want to make this black and white. Um, one of the tricks that um, if you go into the black and white world, sometimes you want to go a little bit too harsh and a little over the top 
within your color photograph so that when you convert it, it makes a more dramatic um, effect when you were back in the black and white. So we're going to just go to brilliant warm on this. And you can see it, it, you know, if this was a normal color photograph, this is just way too much. It's just too over the top. Too much. But for where we're going to end up, the pre-visualization of uh, where we're going to go, it's, uh, it's going to bring you there. And this time I'm actually going to use the simplify uh, detail and edges that's in the studio. Instead of the plugin, so it shows you it works both ways. There we go, and this should be ready to go. And we will open this up, and we're going to come down here to simplify detail refinement. And here is all of the detail, whether it's clear day, dust removal. I am very, very fond of each edge and detail boost. I'll go over each one of these, what they have in them. We're using the abstraction uh, adjustment. And as you can see, it's simplifying the size just a little bit. The feature boost, it's jacking it up to about 14. The strength uh, at about 40. I'm very happy with this. I typically don't make too, too many adjustments on here. Maybe just a hair on this one. And the detail boost, as you know, boosts whatever is in the detail strength. So I'm going to leave that alone. And the detail radius, I'm going to just a little bit. And again, this is always, always seasoned to taste. So what is next in here is the basic adjustment. Um, the exposure stayed the same. The clarity, you can increase just a hair for this particular image, not too, too much. You know, everybody's uh, tastes are a little bit different, and what works for me may not uh, be your your style, but I particularly like this. The shadows, I'm happy with. Maybe just open up just a hair, bring out some of this. Highlights, I'm going to drop down just a little bit because I have uh, a little bit of uh, hot spots down here. And this was a single image, not a blended. And then the tone curves, which is part of it. And you can see S curves, uh, which is very strong. Um, bring this out just a little bit. Bring this up a little bit. And this is all built in. And this is the preset that's available. And again, so, you know, season to your particular taste. So at this point, I'm going to add in a little bit of the edge, which was part of the, the uh, plugin, but now it's all part of the uh, studio as well. So I want the edges of this old abandoned uh, abbey um, to be highlighted. Edge thickness, I'm going to make just a little bit more because I want those cracks in the, the ground to come out a little bit more. The resolution is fine. The color, color edge is fine. We have monochrome, we have uh, color edge, we have color line and monochrome line. I like the color edge on this one. So next step, we're going to go back to my my favorite. It's still always is going to be, um, I don't know who the software guy that developed this is, but you know, please thank him for me. This I think is... that's actually Albert. You might talk about that a little bit. We got a couple of questions about why do you always use precision contrast? I, I, my style, my style of what I, I try to present, uh, you know, for my gallery clients, my gallery customers, I've personalized my style. So I've developed a look. And as part of my look, I, I like precision contrast. So it, it works really, really well for me. Um, I've, I've, you know, experimented with everything. I've been doing this over 50 years. So and this is just, it suits me of, of a look that I define for me, that it separates me from uh, most other people that um, I shoot with and, and, and photograph with. It's my style. So, and this, this software works really well with that. I'm going to increase this up just a little bit as far as the midtones, and it's going to bring the lightness up. Um, as you know, this is 
akin to like the zone system of working with the midtones, the darks, and the shadows. Um, works well. Works well. Everybody, uh, I think Heath is is trying to find their own particular style of their look. And I think over all these years, I think I've developed what it's recognizable as my look. Not that I won't try other things. It's just that this is something that works really well for me. So thank Albert for developing this particular one for me. I certainly will. <laughs> <laughs> He's made me a very happy camper, uh, to be honest with you. And I'm going to try one more. Uh, it, it's okay to have more than one uh, tone curve. Um, again, just a little little i'm going to open up it up just a little bit so the middle is a little bit lighter now so open it up right about there you don't necessarily always have to have an s curve in there sometimes you, if you want the middle to, uh, tones to be a little bit brighter again you can make it darker here through the middle and brighter just a little as i want that to come out all in this through here once i turn this to black and white um, it effectively does my dodging and burning for me. And that we're going to go to black and white. I really like this. This just, you know, as I said, if you go a little bit over the top on the color side of things, once you convert it to black and white, um, it's already there for you. For the most part, it's already there for you. So now I remember the colors that were in here, and I'm going to make some adjustments to suit my particular taste. And I remember we had some reds and some yellows. And if you're not sure, just move the sliders until you get what you want. I don't think there was too much in the way of blue here, but there was some green earlier. You can see the, the subtle change in there. And I like that look there. Now, again, I'm, I'm a big fan, a very, very big fan of uh, vignette. Um, subtle, over the top. Uh, it depends on the photograph. And I'm going to make the strength just a little bit because I really want your eye drawn down these passageways and into the roof area up here. And I would make this just a little bit bigger. I'm not blocking out too much, but it's drawing you in to what I want you to see and how I want you to feel about the photograph. So I'll set with that one. And we have another one. How are we doing for time? We have time for one more. Yes, 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 we do. Yes, I think we can squeeze in one more. All right. We could keep you for another hour if you want. <laughs> I I prepared a bunch, but... Um, you know, I really want to, um, I, I hope I'm explaining um, well enough. Um, so this is uh, down at the um, Mystic Seaport in Mystic, Connecticut, where I take uh, workshop tours down there a lot. So I'm very familiar with this place. And this is um, um, actually where they make the rope. It's a living museum like you see around the country where actually people work there. Um, and they develop, um, you know, different tools in there. They have a cooperage in there. They have a blacksmith shop in there. In fact, that drill was from the blacksmith shop. And this is their rope house, where the ships would actually make the old ropes for the uh, wooden ships. So we're going back into the plug-in world here. A lot of the stuff you can do um, with just studio, but not everybody owns all of the adjustments. And if most folks are coming from the plug-in world, they, uh, they probably have the full suite. So I want to show you that you can go back and forth now. And whoever fixed that, uh, thank them for me again, because it's so much easier. Uh, no more Photoshop to have to do this. So we're going to go with the warm adjustment. I like this. I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment here on the uh, adaptive exposure to open it up just a bit more because I want some of the shadows you know, or the dark areas in the back to, to pop for me. These pieces of rope, I want them to feel warm. And we're going to size this rope down here on the floor. Um, so we're going to increase the, the regions just a hair. This is a huge room. It's probably 300 feet deep. Um, and I'm on, on the floor shooting this. So we're happy, 
happy with this because I know where it's going to go. Your software people are doing a terrific job, by the way. I just thank them for me. They, this is so pleasing. They've been working hard to be glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah, everything is so intuitive, um, really is. I, and I hope that, you know, what I show you today, some people will take away and they'll learn a couple of things, especially with that uh, that little blending little uh, trick I showed you that uh, was a little different. So here we are, we're, we're again highlighted with uh, the last image. It turns into a dash one and it automatically um, highlights it and brings it to the end so you know you're working on the correct one. So I'll make a, a little bit of an adjustment here. We're going to go into edges. I don't want to make this too, too, because we've got soft stuff in here. I wanted to make it just stand out, and I didn't want all of the grit to this particular one that I, uh, some of my photographs are known for. So I just want to bring out some of the edges in the wooden beams. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker so the floor things come up just a bit uh, too much. And I don't want to go so much because this is basically it's a yarn or, or to they make the rope from. So we'll go there. We're going to press the next adjustment would be one of my favorites. Make this a little bit of a curve. You can see the effect if you go a little bit, a little bit too much. Uh, the toe area is going to work on the shadow in the dark areas, while the um, shoulder um, is going to affect the highlights. And it's a balance of where is too much, where is the right amount here. And then we're going to go into my number one. Sorry, this is my number one, but I love this precision contrast. And again, always season to taste. If you can go a little high, that gets a little bit over the top. So it's always just season to taste. I don't tend to use presets too, too much unless I've developed myself, um, but they are a good starting point. And I'm going to bring this up so I can see a little bit more light in here. As you can see, the uh, shadows are opening up here with the midtones, and I'm still maintaining the um, luminance of these uh, yarn that are making the um, rope. And we're going to go into one more, which is precision detail. And again, I go to my go to one, which is my favorite. Here we go. Come on. Subtle shop. I don't like things that are over the top uh, too much. You know, it's like the old too much perfume. It smells and just the right amount. It's it's the right amount. So I like to go gentle and I don't want it to look like it's been over processed. I really don't want you to tell that it's even been processed at all. So we're going to go to HSL. And that's the nice thing I like about uh, Topaz. You can make it so it's just gentle. Um, and not overdone. We're going to reduce a little bit of the orange in this. I have to pick because I am a little bit colorblind. And we're going to reduce a little bit of the saturation here. And I do want to bring the lightness up just a bit to make those uh, rope strings pop. And it also brought up a little bit in here as well. You can tell that big giant rope is on the floor as well. And then last but not least, vignette. And I want your, your eye drawn right where I want it to go. It doesn't have to be over the top strong. It can be just enough to draw your eye. And that's the whole trick is to draw your eye into what the, uh, the artist wants you to see. I'm a big fan of vignettes, much like Ansel was with the edge, um, uh, making edges darker. Um, I like the vignettes. And we're going to make this right about here for the strength. 
And that would be it for that one. Um, guys, Joe's got some great work. You've seen it, and he showed you some of that are going to be that tree photo and a couple others that were going to be in the gallery. Uh, if you like his stuff, you should follow him. He's got his website up at joereardenphotography.com. You can also follow him at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash joereardenphotography. If you'll ever have any questions, you can always contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com, and you can sign up for upcoming webinars. I'm waiting on Rad. I think he's coming in next week. I'm waiting on him to get me the last stuff so I can get his scheduled and get that link up. But y'all can always check on topazlabs.com forward slash webinars to assume we're going to have our next webinar. And I've got to get you scheduled for another one, Joe. I love, I love seeing I, you. I love doing this. Can I, can I do a self-promotion plug for myself? Oh, yeah, of okay. course. Two big workshops coming up, one up to Glacier National Park in September and another one in my backyard down at Cape Cod. Uh, two of my favorite places on earth to go to. So if you're interested in learning all of this, I don't shoot on my workshops. I teach. So if you ever want to take one, just contact me through the uh, photography page. Yeah, and you've got, a blast. you've got information and all of that on your website, right? You bet I do. You oh, bet I do. Fantastic. Yeah, and if you have any workshop stuff coming up in the future, as always, you know, be sure and share it. Um, I know people love your work, and we love making sure that our uh, – our users and our customers and people who are curious about us have resources. We want to make sure you guys are able to produce the kind of work that you want to produce. Joe does a great job with that. So, you know, definitely check that out. I would love to go on one of them, but they chain me to the desk here and they don't let me out. So. <laughs> well, you got to be retired like me. So now I go in, every day Saturday, I go anywhere I want. Oh, jealous. I'm working towards <laughs> it one day. Well, Joe, thank you so much. Everybody else, we had a almost completely full it didn't actually max out but we were like 10 shy of getting the warning that no one else could join so thank you everybody for joining us i uh, really hope to see you on a future webinar joe um i'll give you a buzz as soon as we're up so we can schedule the next one how's that sound sounds perfect all right thanks everybody i appreciate it have a good morning afternoon or evening wherever you are around the world thank you <laughs>